Hello. Hi, my name is Jane Mountaney from the European Monitoring Centre. I'm head of sector for content coordination. One of the most often problems now by the new drugs, in Bulgaria we call them designer drugs, are the psychotic episodes by minors, by teenagers and uh, uh, this is a challenge uh, for the treatment programs. How do you face this challenge? How faced Europe this challenge? Well, I can understand it's a challenge. I think, I think at the broad level, many countries are challenged by actually providing treatment for under-18s because most treatment in, across Europe is, tends to be for the adult populations. So you've already got a, a challenge on that brings in childcare services very often, not just adult treatment services. So one of the issues is that the childcare services and the adult treatment services will need to cooperate to actually provide care. Looking particularly at new psycho psychoactive substances, I think one of the biggest issues is we know so little about them, which means we know very little about how best to treat uh, these substances, which can vary from packet to packet. Um, so actually the same product might have different cannabinoids in, for example. We recently uh, did a survey uh, looking, at, in a very broad sense, at how to respond in terms of care and, and treatment to the challenges of new drugs. So a lot of focus in the past has been on you know, how to control, looking at the laws, looking at law enforcement. And I think it's one of the areas that's been under-researched. I still think it needs to be researched a lot more. But what we did find, talking to experts from many different countries about what they were seeing, how they were responding and what their needs were, what we mainly found, and I would say probably around 90% of cases, uh, health professionals, social professionals said the existing interventions they are already using um, to deal with known illicit drugs work. So a lot of people are scared, oh my goodness what are these new drugs, the names are long, they can't pronounce them and they're worried uh, about how to react. And I think what we saw in most cases, the existing skills that people have can help whether that's in emergency settings, so the doctors will perhaps be using uh, the skills they use for stimulant cases and psychosis linked to other stimulant drugs. M largely speaking, the, the uh, interventions for psychosis linked to methamphetamine could also be used in other psychosis cases. So the trans transferring our knowledge, our health knowledge, our social knowledge, will in most cases, though not all, uh, be probably the best approach and the one that professionals working in depth with these situations are using. I read in the report that 85% from the people who ask for treatment for marijuana in Hungary are coming from the law enforcement. Uh, how typical is this for all the people who need treatment for marijuana and, and how is it uh, with the law enforcement in Europe? Well, there's a few different issues there. What we see, the, the background to that is there's an increase in people entering treatment for the first time for cannabis problems. So that's the sort of European trend. And then what we've done is trying to look at, well, where are they being referred from? Um, and what we see is still most people are referred either self-referrals from family or from health settings. But as you mentioned, for some, for in some cases, the law enforcement referrals are quite major referrers. Now one of the reasons is that it's as an alternative to um, being put into the criminal justice system. So in one or two countries, people that are picked up with crimes are referred into treatment rather than into more criminal settings. Now this of course can make it kind of slightly skew the understanding of what represents cannabis treatment. And that's the second part to the, to the question I would say is when we look at, at how different countries define cannabis treatment we see it's a whole range of different things so there isn't one simple answer. Um, so in some countries cannabis treatment might include internet programs, short internet treatment, in others it might include counselling for young people and centres. In others it might be quite intensive, uh, specialised treatment in residential settings. So one of the complicated things is actually trying to understand what, what different countries define uh, cannabis treatment as. And the most uh, important question for us, 
for Bulgaria is how many countries in New York, European Union uh, take uh, treatment instead of punishment measures? I don't know the exact number because we haven't done monitoring of that, but it's quite common. I would say a, a majority of countries have some kind of mechanism in place whereby in certain circumstances people picked up, usually for possession, um, will have the option. So Portugal is the country perhaps most famous uh, for their, their policy in this area, um, where people who have small amounts of the drug go through the health system and the dissuasion uh, committees. But many other countries do also have alternatives to punishment and alternatives to prison. The UK is another um, that's quite well known.